Information on the built environment is important. But if I were to ask you, do you know the location of the ducts inside your own home? The thickness of the walls? Well, my guess is that you don't know. But don't worry, it's, it's, it's not just you. It turns out that the details on the built environment are just not there when we need them. Whether you're a housing corporation that has a large stock of buildings to remodernize, whether you're a city planner or whether you're the fire department where, where every second counts. In a more broader perspective, the in construction industry has a large responsibility to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But still, offices are being built in vain. So this needs to change. But in order to change this, and in order to respond to future trends, and in order to be more sustainable, we need to know what has been built now. And the truth is that we don't. So meet Lyle, the typical facility manager. If you ask him something about a building, the only thing he can do is examine every paper sheet one at a time. Or maybe more conveniently, just go back to the building in question and measure it by hand. So this is the central issue of my presentation. And I'm going to share with you four research outcomes. But first, let me explain to you Building Information Modeling, or BIM. This is a recent paradigm shift where before we designed the building as, as mere symbolic 2D geometries where only we, human beings, were able to interpret and understand what was written down. So this transformed into documenting a building by means of a collection of rich parametric objects that have their own relational semantics. So we see this method now getting adopted rather rapidly in the industry, but uh, as a means to improve collaboration and to prevent design flaws, but not as a means to document the built environment. So this is where the DuraArc project, project came in. DuraArc is an EU-funded project where we looked at forming semantic archives of building models, structured according to novel metadata standards. For the purpose of what's called long-term digital preservation, that you can retrieve the information you're after when you want it and, and where you want it. Also in this project, we looked at machine learning to analyze and classify building models and to even derive semantically rich BIM models from raw measurements. What you see here is how we use machine learning to detect design errors by comparing individual elements to elements of that same type and detect anomalies, things that are different from the norm. And you can do this to improve the quality of the built environment. Secondly, here we propose a system to recommend vacant facilities uh, to aspiring owners based on a combined metric of refurbishing and acquiring costs. And we did this based, by, based on combining BIM metrics and GIS metrics, uh, geographic or demographic uh, information. But then the question rises, if you have these archives, how to actually keep them up to date? And more fundamentally, how to verify that what has been planned has actually also been built in reality. And for this purpose, point clouds are very suitable. There is a rather fundamental difference between, on the one hand, point clouds and BIM models. So point clouds are unstructured, raw measurements of millions of points, whereas BIM models are intricately, semantically rich, efficient models. And the most prevalent open standard to describe and exchange building models is called IFC, or Industry Foundation Classes. We proposed an extension to IFC to incorporate these point cloud segments. And by doing this, these point clouds can be even stored more efficiently than in state-of-the-art compression methods. Because only the deviation from the as-planned BIM model needs to be stored. On the other hand, 
incorporating these point clouds embeds rich geometric detail in these BIM models of how the building is actually built, how it's functioning, and how it is progressing over time. But of course, this results in relatively large documents. And for this purpose, we have proposed a binary format that's structured in a hierarchical fashion. And this hierarchical notion allows to retrieve the information you're after from such a model almost instantly. Compare here the query times. On, on, on the one hand, the traditional text-based IFC models and our binary counterpart. You can observe that for the text-based model, the entire model needs to be understood first prior to answering a question. Whereas on our binary counterpart, due to the hierarchical structure, only the actually relevant information needs to be searched. In fact, this format is so efficient that we have proposed a Sparkle query engine on top of this format without any necessary pre-processing or indexing. So Sparkle is the language, the query language of the semantic web. And the built environment is extremely multidisciplinary. And the semantic web allows to seamlessly uh, interrelate all these data sources into one uh, unified queryable environment. And by doing so, we can answer the question of the future, which are increasingly multidisciplinary. So to conclude, we looked at large archives of building models and made them searchable. We augmented them with multidisciplinary information. By doing this, we can learn from these archives and create better buildings. In fact, we turned the fabric of our built environment, our buildings, into big data that can be analyzed. We've shown methods to recommend vacant facilities based on stakeholder demands. And in general, we have, we have provided ways to analyze our built environment towards a safer and more pleasant and more sustainable world. Thank you. Um, this is all relatively recent research. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me on the, on the address below. <laughs>